What the heck is 12V HPWR? And will this SFX power supply really support the next generation of graphics cards? Welcome to Machines and More. Many of you have seen the SP750 power supply from Lee and Lee. I did a build with it in the semi-passive Sliger project, but this one, the SP850, is the latest addition to the series, and it is an 850 watt unit featuring what Lee and Lee calls a 12V HPWR connector cable, which I'll spend some time discussing later on. Big thanks to Lee and Lee for providing the testing unit for this review. This review is not sponsored by them. And uh, as always, the testing and the review content on this channel is independent. 850 watts isn't super impressive for an ATX sized power supply, but for SFX sized power supplies, there aren't too many that hit that level. You have the Cooler Master 850 watt, you have the EVGA GM 850, and also FSP makes one. So reality is uh, it's slim pickings in this arena. So why would you want 850 watts? Now it's not necessarily so that you can draw 850 watts all the time, but more so to put the power supplies load at a comfortable level relative to the maximum that it's rated for. Efficiency for most power supplies peaks at around 50% of the maximum rated output. You'll also have the benefit of the cooling fan not running at peak levels. You also need to account for spikes in your power draw. So if you do expect your system to draw somewhere around 425 watts at ballpark, 850 watts is a good level of power supply to aim for. In practice, if you're running uh, something like a 3080 along with a uh, 5600X or 5800X, this is the level to aim for. The SP850 is a gold plus rated unit at that 50% load, 115 volts AC. It's 91.55% efficient, so that's a very good number. I tested this one out in the form T1V2 for stock cables. These actually look really nice. End to end, the ATX 24 pin cable measures 340 millimeters. You get two separate CPU EPS cables. Each one measures in at 640 millimeters. That's actually pretty long for an SFX power supply. So perhaps they have their O11 mini in mind here. You also get one eight pin to six plus two pin PCIe and also an eight pin to dual six plus two pin ended cable. These both measure in at 430 millimeters. You also get SATA and peripheral power cables. They're not sleeved though, and well, neither is this special cable here, which we'll talk about shortly. It's what Lian Lee is calling a PCIe 5.0 12V HPWR 12 pin GPU cable measuring in at 430 millimeters. This unit is well built and looks similar to the SP750. The fan vents, they're vertical here and you've got a 92 millimeter hydraulic bearing fan. The fan is spec to spin gradually when the unit reaches 40% load or when the ambient temperature hits 60 degrees. In my testing with 3070 FE and a 5600 CPU, these fans started spinning when both components hit full load. That's about where you'd expect it. Measure it at the wall, I was seeing spikes up to 350 watts on this system when it was fully loaded. So that's around where you would expect the fan to come on based on that 40% number. Personally, I don't think a zero RPM mode is a particularly useful feature in a power supply, especially an SFX one. This one is, it's okay. Uh, it's still noticeably audible when it starts to spin up initially, but it definitely does not spike like the earlier versions of the Cooler Master SFX units did. A couple things I noted when installing this one, when looking at the fan, the AC cable connector, it's located on the left, which is the opposite end compared to your typical Corsair, EVGA, and Cooler Master SFX units. Although this seems minor, you might want to take note of this because a lot of cases in the SFF arena and their supplied AC cable, well, they're designed around that right side orientation because they have uh, an orientation for the fan in mind. And that me means that the fit with the T1 V2, it's a little bit odd uh, with the connector, even though it did work at the end of the day. The other thing I noted was the threads and the mounting holes that were exceptionally tight. So you will have to supply a little extra elbow grease to tighten it down. Otherwise, I didn't have any issues. The cables look nice, and uh, I wish they did have some cable cones with them. But uh, I did get to try out this 12-pin GPU cable, which allows me to connect the PSU directly to the 3070FE card, which uses a Molex Microfit 3.0 connector. So let's talk about this cable, because this is one of the headline features. Lian Lee says this is the first SFX PSU to include a 12-pin PCIe 5.0 cable. That's true. 
Uh, this cable has two 8-pin ends that hooks up to your power supply and a 12-pin end that connects to your GPU. Now, I won't delve too deep into this topic, but I did want to provide a little bit of relevant info and context here. So let's explore this a little bit. So earlier this year, Intel introduced the new ATX 3.0 power supply standard. And the headline spec there is a 12V HPWR connector that will power graphics cards, uh, supplying up to 600 watts of power to one single 12 plus four pin connector. So here you have up to 12 pins for power delivery with up to four pins for a sideband signaling or communication between the card and the power supply. This is important because in order to deliver that much power to the card across a limited amount of cables and connectors, the load on each connector has to be carefully controlled and that will require at least two out of the four sideband connectors. Some of you might know that the 3090 Ti Founders card uses such a 12 plus four pin connector and it ships with an adapter to three regular eight pin PCIe connector cables. So that sideband communication, it's not strictly required to operate this card, only if you want to use that 12V HPWR or 12 volt high power if you read quickly between the lines. Uh, most people will not have a power supply capable of that sideband communication just yet because that power supply would need to conform to the ATX 3.0 standard and those units are just rolling out now. So why is this all relevant? Well, even though theoretically this single 16 gauge cable should be capable of 600 watts and Lian Lee says this is ready for the next gen of PCIe 5.0 cards. Uh, this power supply itself is an ATX 3.0 and as such it just has those 12 pins for power delivery and without the sideband connectors and because it doesn't have that communication capability this essentially is a 2x8 pin connector to 12 pin adapter cable and this can only be run with up to around about a 400 watt card. So we'll know soon enough what power supply requirements the next generation of graphics cards will have. But if there are cards that require that sideband connection, worst case your ATX 2.0 power supplies won't work at all. Best case, they will work, but they may require an adapter cable and a lot more cabling than the 12 volt HPWR route. Of course, let's not ignore the elephant in the room, which is if you do ultimately have a 600 watt card, an 850 watt power supply is not going to be optimal. For example, the MSI ATX 3.0 power supply is a 1300 watt unit. So anyhow, at the end of the day, much ado about nothing. Is this really a 12V HPWR cable? Uh, not strictly speaking, but what you do get is a cable that will work directly with Ampere Founders Edition cards sporting that 12 pin Molex MicroFit 3.0 connector. And future 12 pin cards up to 400 watts that don't require that sideband connection. Beyond that, who knows at this point. So before I sum up the review, I did want to give you a quick and dirty sound sample just to give you an idea of the fan noise. It's high pitched, but that's what you expect with a 92 millimeter fan. Lin Lee says the noise at the same max RPM of 2800 is 2.5 decibels lower than with the SP750. All right, MSRP is 150 US on this, which is quite fair. You get a five year warranty, which is kind of short compared to Cooler Master's 10 year and EVGA's seven year coverage. So to sum this one up, overall, this is a nice power supply. And yes, it is the first SFX power supply to include a 12 pin GPU cable. But if you're looking ahead to the next generation of cards like the upcoming RTX 4000 ADA NVIDIA GPUs, I'm a little bit skeptical this will be a seamless solution. So definitely my recommendation would be to press pause on a power supply until cards are released and you know what you need. If you're just looking for something to pair with a higher powered current generation card, this one's definitely a strong contender. And with the exception of the long EPS cables, these stock cables, they make for a very elegant build. So I hope you found this informative. If so, give a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Product links are down below. Thanks for watching.